Okay, I'm hoping that it just ran out of memory and it didn't just malfunction. Because if it malfunctioned, it's going to malfunction again. Because um, I don't know what it was. I'm hoping it was memory and then I've just deleted a few things. So hopefully that will correct it. Anyway, so we've got John, Lord Summers, late Lord Chancellor. Brown complexion. We have got... Maybe I'll just go through a few more. Go to the next one. Actually, let me just... I'll just go through all of them. And then... Um, maybe I'll do the next book in another... Well, I'll do the next book in another video. Um, Algaron Capel, Earl of F Essex. Brown complexion. Uh, I think that says Basil Fielding, Earl of Denby. He is tall, fat and very black. <laughs> I think very black, that says it all. Oh dear. Uh, Richard Lumley, Earl of Scarborough, a brown of a brown complexion. Earl of Kingston is of a black complexion. Well made. Um, Thomas Tufton, Earl of Thanet, black, red faced man. Uh, Edward Montague, Earl of Sandwich, a small, thin black man. Yeah. What's that? Is that small there? Small, thin, black man. Um, Richard, Earl of Ranley. He is very fat and black. So obviously all, all of the other ones I'm flicking through are not saying they're black. So it means that they're not black. Uh, obviously black is not the best terminology to use at law but you know this is how they were described back then there wasn't the issue even still now today people don't really realize that it, it puts you at a loss calling yourself black but anyway for the purposes of identification again identification not even a good word but um, you can clearly see what they're saying and who they're describing um, Hineage Finch Lord Guernsey a tall thin black man um, uh, Montague Venables, Bertie, Earl of Ab Abingdon, of a black complexion. Um, Earl of uh, Feversham, middle statured brown man. George, Lord of Abergavenny, a little brown man. Um, Robert, Lord Lexington, of a brown complexion. Neville, Lord Lovelace, um, a short, fat brown man. Ford, Lord Grey of Work. A thin, brown, handsome man. I'll just, I'll just skip to the ones that are saying black. So just, you know, just for the sake of, of foolproofing. Um, let's see. When are we next? So obviously, let me just show you. Like I'm flicking through so many pages of those who are not described as black. So, so let's see how many pages I flick through. So. Uh, from the last page where there was somebody, just for an example, who was described as black. Um, uh, let's see, because this a book is full of different descriptions. So the last page when somebody was described as black is page 96. Page 96. So then all of these guys I'm flicking through. So like I say, it's not everybody. Um, I'm going to go so from 96 all the way to let's see all the way to 137 so you're looking at it's almost one per page so 96 to 137 what's that 4 plus 37 that's 41 so that could be another 41 guys almost so the next one who's described as a black man is um, John Archbishop of uh, York is a black man so you know what I'm gonna leave it there so that can kind of give you a description of you know and it's quite a big book lots and lots and lots of pages there so basically a lot of the those so, so basically this is a book that tells you um, who was transported um, let's see if I can find anywhere where it quickly traces that point that they were transported uh, yeah. anyway we've got that bit there that talks about the ages to come so that will do for now 
um, because that could take ages to I did want to go through this one though so I found this interesting and this kind of does kind of describe the sort of confusion that was around now you know sort of where are we um, so that was kind of like around 1666 so we're now in 20 22 so you're looking at obviously like just um, around 400 years is like everything is made to look cookie cutter now according to how a specific narrative wants to play out but to be fair back then even to describe what really happened would be difficult because um, it was made it was put into disarray at that point for good reason because there was a, a coup basically and a takeover so with Cromwell we had a lot of book burning you know he went around and made sure that lots of artifacts and art and paintings were all burnt um, similar to what happened um, you know in the wars in, in Germany you know a lot of books were burnt just to, to change a narrative so even maybe a hundred years later it'd be difficult to work out what happened like the, the grandchildren of those who were still alive at the time when it was happening might even have been clueless as to what went on because there were just no artifacts or pictures or correct records about what happened for good reason because um, it was um, you know it was like the changeover you know like the renaissance like a new a new world coming into being which actually is, is a de facto world it's not the real du jour world so even back then as I'm trying to say it would be difficult to work out what was going on even during it happening because you know one day everybody's like oh King Charles is there he's a great guy but I think there was a little bit of jealousy with regard to him and then the next day he's dead you know and um, it must have been so confusing you know because these the, this is a nation of people who are well aware of you know Hobbes's book with regard to trying to persuade him to, to take the nation forward as king you know so everybody must have been confused I'll probably in a later again a later um, video I'll talk about um, there is an account by presumably he seems to talk like he was one of the friends of of, of King Charles um, who unfortunately decided to side with those who were taking him down but he didn't think that it was they were going to go as far as to just murder him um, so it's kind of like a, 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 an apology um, by him so I might go through that anyway so I just wanted to say one more thing from this book um, to just read that through so I've just got it sort of highlighted here so I'll read what I've got so this is so again this is somebody who uh, was transported um, and it says he's of a black complexion. So this is James, Duke of Hamilton. And it says he's, uh, obviously, so it, it talks a lot. So it's got James, Duke of Hamilton, and it talks, it's all this about him and then all this about him. So it's quite, he had quite a lengthy uh, record of him. And then it goes down here. And then it says here that he is of a black complexion. But I just thought it was interesting um, and probably why he had quite a lot written about him was because, um, Okay, so he's one of the characters of the nobility of Scotland. So his name is James, Duke of Ham Hamilton. It says, he is the grandson to that Duke who was beheaded at London for King Charles the I. And he's son to the Duke who presided in that convention of estates which declared King William. So that tells you of the dichotomy. So this guy, James, is the grandson of, a, to me anyway, this is my perspective, a good Duke who stood firm with King Charles. But, he's, but then his dad is one of those who presided in the Convention of Estates, which declared King William to take over the estates of the murdered King Charles. So you can see even those at the time in disarray. I mean, that must have been a confusing thing for the, for the grandson. So obviously the grandson took off after the, the granddad um, because obviously he's in the list of those who were deported. So, um, yeah, just interesting. That just tells you right there. So even at the time there was, you know, differences and dissensions, uh, and differences of opinion and dissensions in the same, you know, amongst the same kinfolk. So, yeah, that tells you there. Right, so I'm going to, should I stop this? I'm hoping it's recording. <laughs> assuming it's recording. I'm going to stop this and then go to the different book.